Hi kids, it's me, Miss Booksy. So I've met some pretty awesome superheroes before. Mostly the stupendous stupendous. <laughs> Let's watch all of our cool school adventures with Drew and other superheroes. Well, there's the house, and there's the rabbit, and the policeman. But where's Alice? Over here. The cookie made me shrink, and I escaped. Let's go. Hey, this looks like a great place to rest. What are you guys supposed to be? We are footmen. Footmen? <laughs> but you have fins. Shouldn't I call you fin men? <laughs> footman is a fancy word for a servant. I work for the Duchess. And I work for the Queen. Well, I am very impressed. Nice to meet you both. I think I'd like to ask the Duchess if she can help me find my way home. Wait, you need me to open the door. I'm the footman. I can do it. Bless you. Bless you. Gesundheit. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Who let you in? My footman? More like the fin man. <laughs> Am I right? Need a tissue? Here, watch the baby. Wait a second, I'm bigger than that baby. Of course you are, why wouldn't you be? But out there, I was tiny. Look, I'm tiny. I'm big. Tiny. Big. Tiny. I'm big. <laughs> That's enough, I'm going to play croquet. Take good care of the baby. Why is everyone giving me jobs to do? Good thing I like babies. Okay, baby, it's just you and me. And me. Ah! A giant cat! Maybe you're just small. I think I'm my usual size now, actually. It's hard to tell sometimes. Say, do you know how to babysit? There's a baby here? I only see you, me, and a pig wearing a diaper. Ah! Ah! The baby turned into a pig! Oh no, I'm the worst babysitter ever! And why are you grinning? This isn't funny. I'm a Cheshire cat, it's what I do. Well stop it, it's not funny, and I don't know how to take care of a pig slash baby. Don't worry about it, Porky knows how to take care of himself. Let's watch TV and order a pizza. Usually I'd say yes to pizza, but you guys are making me a little nervous. I'm out of here. <laughs> hey! The room turned all topsy-turvy. Do you know the way out of here? Why don't you use the door, you batchy galoob? Whoa, where am I? Who are you? I'm Alice. Who are you? I'm Drew. I was just looking for some ink for my pen. I was right in the middle of a new sketch. Nice. <laughs> I was looking for my way home, or at least this really awesome garden with a Ferris wheel and a merry-go-round. <laughs> I heard there might even be a roller coaster. Sounds cool. If I was an actual superhero with superpowers, I would fly you there. Thanks. Unfortunately, you seem like the most regular person I've met in this rabbit hole. Is that what this is? One minute I was at school looking for ink in my locker. Next thing I know, I'm down here and you come falling through the ceiling. <sighs> Let me guess. No way out. No, I think we're trapped. Oh, story of my life. Hey, that looks like ink. Toss it here. Ah! My bad. Whoa, I turned into a cartoon. Hey, look, all I have to do is draw something and then it's real. Awesome. Wow. All I've been able to do is shrink and grow and shrink and grow and shrink and grow and shrink and grow. Wow, <laughs> cool jetpack. I've always wanted to do that. Can I have a jetpack too? Come on. Whew. I'm glad we got away from the queen, but what now? I'm just eyes and a mouth. Don't worry about it. All we gotta do is drink this potion. Wait a minute. Oh no, I left the potion in my pocket, which was on my pants, which have disappeared. Oh no, what if I'm only a mouth and eyes forever? I'll never get to learn ballet, or run a marathon, 
We're swimming with the dolphins. What about me over here? Those were my favorite pants. Whoa, Alice, is that you? Yeah, hi, Drew. Wait, Drew, can you draw the rest of us? I think I can. How's that? Awesome, <laughs> thanks. Okay, I don't know what you looked like before. Can you describe yourself? Oh, sure. First, let's see. I was tall, very tall, and strong with big muscles. A very cool mustache, and a suit made of pure gold. Oh, that's perfect. That is not what you looked like. Come on, why you gotta ruin all my fun? He's actually a purple stripy cat, super furry, with a yellow and orange necktie, <laughs> and a red hat with little flowers sticking out the top. Don't forget my orange cargo pants. Done. There's that potion. Told you I left it in my pocket. Never mind that now. Let's go play. <laughs> Woohoo! Alice, Drew, and the Cheshire Cat went over to the Ferris wheel. They were so excited. Three tickets for the Ferris wheel, please. <laughs> Sorry, kiddo. You must be this tall to ride. I'm sure I was taller before. Or maybe the Ferris wheel was smaller. See, I keep eating these cookies and drinking these potions that make me grow and shrink, and I'm pretty sure the real me is tall enough to ride this ride. Sorry, kid. Move along. Ugh! Oh well, there were more rides, so the three went over to the merry-go-round. Three tickets for the merry-go-round, please. This is a kid's ride. You're way too tall. What? Now I'm too tall? Too tall. Hey, there's a roller coaster over there. Maybe you'll be just the right amount of tall for that one. Let's try it. It totally looked like a regular roller coaster, but when they got there, they saw that it was ginormous and that the you must be this tall to ride sign was towering over their heads. I thought this garden was going to be amazing and so much fun, but it's not. First, there was that awful game of flamingo hedgehog croquet. Then the queen wanted to off with my head. And now, all these rides keep changing size. Or am I? I don't even know. And, and I haven't even had one single bite of cotton candy! Aw, cheer up, Alice. Yeah, I don't like it when you're sad. Hey, I have an idea. Here! Yes! My own jetpack! Aw, oh, I always wanted one of these. Now we can fly up to the top of the Ferris wheel. You can see all the sights. Awesome! And we can go around and around in circles just like a merry-go-round. Oh, okay, I'm getting dizzy. And we can go up yes. and down and all around just like a roller coaster. Ah, too fast. That was fun, Drew. Thanks. Yeah, tons of fun. Oh, I'm just glad it's over. No problem, guys. Suddenly, the gang heard a familiar voice. There they are! with their heads. Oh no, it's the Queen of Hearts. Run! Better yet, let's jet. Alice Drew and the Cheshire Cat flew right over the Queen and her army. She did not like that at all. She would have totally offed their heads if she could have reached them. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his Mighty Pet Ultimate. In today's episode, Drew's going to save one of the most beautiful, one of the most fairest princesses of them all, Snow White. It was story time at Cool School, but Miss Booksy was out sick, and there was a substitute teacher reading a class favorite. Wait, is that who I think it is? All right, here's my favorite part. Snow White wandered deep into the forest where she found a big house, and when she walked in, she was met by seven humongous giants. Huh? That doesn't sound right. Snow White meets seven dwarves, not seven giants. Listen, Captain Hooksy, we want Miss Booksy back. Settle down, this is how I'm telling the story. Drew was right. This wasn't how the real story of Snow White was supposed to go. I don't like this one bit. I'm gonna get to the bottom of it. So Drew pulled out his mighty penultimate and sketched a totally awesome portal, which he used to transport himself yeah. right into the pages of Miss Booksy's storybook. Whoa, those giants are even bigger in person. I bet they've taken the dwarves captive and stolen their home. I've got to save those dwarves. Fee, fi, fo, fum. But first, Drew had to make himself look big and scary before those giants ate him for dinner. So he sketched a massive growing machine and zapped himself till he became the biggest, tallest, strongest giant of them all. Hey, you. Listen here, my name is Giant Drew, and I'm here to put an end to your evil shenanigans. Now go back where you came from and let the seven dwarves come back home. Fee, fi, fo, fum. Why do you guys 
guys always say that? No one has any idea what it means. Oh, uh, yeah, us neither. Ma always taught it to us growing up, and it just stuck. I think it's because our littlest brother, Normie, used to suck his thumb. It's got a nice rhythm. fee fi fo fum Little Normie sucks his thumb. Of course, Normie is 18 feet tall now, so we don't tease him anymore. No, no, no. I see exactly what's going on here. You're trying to distract me so you can do all your evil giant stuff without me getting in the way. Giants are always getting a bad rap. We're pretty nice guys once you get to know us. Um, wait a sec. Sure you guys haven't been holding the seven dwarves captive so you can take over their home and scare anyone away that threatens to stop you? Uh, nope. Not us. Ma sent us here. Something about meeting a princess and living happily ever after? You mean Snow White? That's the one. Pale skin, red lips, likes to hang out in caskets. Nice lady from what I hear. You seen her around? Come on in. Doors open. You must be Snow White. Uh, she didn't look like Snow White. Why, yes, yes I am. You see, I was just running away from my evil stepmother and I had no place to go. But then I stumbled across your house and I thought I'd stop in to fill my belly and rest my tired feet. Well, sure, princess. Make yourself comfortable. No, no, no. This is not right. You're not the real Snow White. This is not how the story goes. Where's Miss Booksy? And unless we find the dwarves and bring them back, they'll be totally homeless. Oh my, homeless dwarves? That doesn't sound very pleasant at all. We already told you, kid. We don't know what you're talking about. We haven't seen any dwarves. Well, maybe your mom will know. She sent you here after all. Okay, but I'm warning you. Mom's been in a pretty bad mood lately. Drew followed the giants deep, deep, deep into the dark, dark forest until they finally reached a giant castle. Well, this is it. Home sweet home. Who's there? Um, it's me, Giant Drew. We're wondering if you've seen any dwarves around here. How dare you trespass on my property? There are no dwarves here. Now shoot! Drew was running out of ideas until suddenly he noticed a trail of small footprints and decided to follow him all the way to the back of the castle where he found a gang of seven dwarves splashing around in a humongous swimming pool. This is where you've been all this time? Hey, who invited the giant kid? This is a dwarves only pool party. What are you doing? I thought I told you to stay away. I thought you said you haven't seen any dwarves. All right, all right, let me explain. I heard a nice princess named Snow White maybe passing by the dwarves house. So I sent my sons over there to say hello. And I brought those little guys over here. No biggie. Can I get you a Shirley Temple? Wow, you giants sure are nice, but you're messing up an important story. Snow White's supposed to meet the seven dwarves, and then she's supposed to marry the prince. You can't just change the whole story. That's not cool. Well, what choice do I have? How are my boys gonna live happily ever after? Hmm, I think I have an idea. Drew quickly whipped out his mighty penultimate and snatched a massive loudspeaker. Pool party at the giant's house. All are welcome. Shirley Temples and fruit smoothies will be served. It was an awesome party, and the giants made so many new friends. The wrong Snow White even hit it off with one of the giants, and they danced all night. There you go. These guys will get their happily ever after in no time. Wow, thanks, Giant Drew. You sure know how to save the day and make a mother happy. My pleasure. Now, come on, dwarves. There's a princess waiting to meet you so we can get a very important story right. The other dwarves hopped out of the pool and followed Drew back to the house. Thanks, Giant, for bringing us home. Oops, hold on. <laughs> That's better. See you later. With his mission complete, Drew sketched the portal right back to cool school. But there was still one big problem. Listen, Captain Hooksy, your story stinks. We want Miss Booksy back. Where is she? I told you, she's out sick. Let me out! Let me out! That was a lousy trick, Hooksy. You didn't need a broom after all. Take a hike, Hooksy. I'm not going anywhere. Well, you're not going to ruin our story time anymore either. Hey, Boastful! Hey, Drew, you called? Could you please take Captain Hooksy here back to cruel school where she belongs? No problem. Hey, put me down! 
The Snow White story worked out just the way it's supposed to. Thanks to Drew Pendis. Moral of the story, kids, giants need love too. And when you meet someone who needs love, it's always a good idea to throw them an awesome pool party because nothing says it's going to be okay like a great big pool party. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendis and his mighty penultimate. In today's episode, Drew's got to save a real life princess. Let's hope it ends happily ever after. And don't forget our special game today, kids. See how many of these princess crowns you can find hidden in the episode. And don't forget to tell us in the comments below how many you found. It was story time at Cool School and Drew and his buddies were waiting for Miss Booksy to arrive so they could start today's story, Rapunzel. Where is Miss Booksy? I'm so ready for story time. Hey guys, check this out. I made a come to life zapper. I'm alive. Awesome. Wow, can you make Rapunzel come to life? I could braid her hair. Sure, why not? Uh oh. <laughs> this place it stinks of kids i kind of like it it sure beats being alone in a tower omg i can't believe it you're a real witch and princess somebody pinch me ow uh guys if rapunzel and the witch aren't in the book how are we gonna have story time <gasps> They're gone! Oh no! Uh-oh, kids! The evil witch had escaped outside and she took Rapunzel with her! It was up to Drew to find him before Miss Booksy got back! Hmm, if I were an evil witch who likes to keep princesses captive, where would I go? That's it! The Cool School Tower, of course! With no time to spare, Drew whipped out his mighty pen ultimate and he sketched a super awesome flying horse! To the Cool School Tower, we have a princess to save. And Drew was off to the races on a quest to save Rapunzel from the evil witch and put them back in the book where they belong. Hey, can you fly me up to the top? I've only been alive for a couple of minutes. Not really sure how the wings work. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, you work on that. I'll figure out another way to get up there. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let your hair down. Wow, nice hair. Drew took hold of Rapunzel's hair and started climbing and swinging his way to the tippity top of the tower. Hang on, princess, I'm coming. Jeez, hair climbing is harder than it looks. You again? What are you doing here? I'm here to save the princess from your evil grasp and bring you guys back to cool school so you can return to your storybook. He came all this way just to save the day. Hip, 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 hooray! You can rap? Uh, yeah. Where do you think I got my name? Rap, Unzel, Rapunzel, get it? Listen here, fake prince. I found a tower here in this strange world you come from, and we will not be going anywhere. Now, shoo. We'll see about that. Drew pulled out his pen and sketched a super cool sandwich shooting cannon. Oh, sandwiches, my favorite. <laughs> Just as I suspected, no witch can resist sand witches. Rapunzel, quick! Down this slide! Finally! Transportation that doesn't involve pulling my hair. Whee! Hey, where'd my sandwiches go? I'll give you as many as you like if you come back with me to cool school. Do you have grilled cheese and liver? Or peanut butter and jelly with slices of banana and asparagus? Uh, yeah, sure, as many as you like. Say no more, let's go. Well, if it isn't my knight in shining armor. I think I got it this time. Let's just take the land route. Okay, suit yourself. Whoa! Yeah, yeah Drew, you found them. Hey Rapunzel, can I get a quick selfie? So we totally getting at least a thousand likes for this one. All right, evil witch. A giant stash of sandwiches, just like I promised. Now time to go back where you came from. Uh, am I gonna have to go back in that tower again? That's how the story goes, sweet pea. At least we've got these sandwiches to keep us busy. Uh-oh, Miss Booksy's coming. Uh, bye guys, bon appetit. Hi kids, sorry I'm late. I couldn't find my glasses. Turned out they were on my head the whole time. <laughs> Silly me. Anyway, today we're reading a very special story. Rapunzel, wait till you meet these characters. 
Wouldn't that be fun? Once upon a time in a, hmm, that's weird. I don't remember this story having so many sandwiches. Well, kids, Drew saved the day again. Rapunzel and the Evil Witch were back where they belong, and story time was back on track. More of the story, boys and girls. Never use come-to-life zappers on storybooks unless you want to have a play date with witches and princesses. And try sandwiches the next time you're looking to defeat a witch. They're sure to do the trick. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his Mighty Pen Ultimate. In today's episode, Drew's got to fight something big to save something little. It was story time at Cool School, and Drew and his buddies couldn't wait to read one of their favorite stories ever. Oh, hey kids! Today we have a very exciting story to read, Little Red Riding Hood. Let's get started. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a cute little girl. Everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood because she always wore a... Wait a second! Something doesn't look right here. Hmm. Well, that's Little Red Riding Hood, all right. But why isn't she wearing red? Hmm, I guess we could just call her Little Riding Hood. No, no, no! That's not how the story goes. I've got to figure out what's going on here. With story time on the line, Drew got right into costume. Then he sketched a portal and jumped right into Miss Books' storybook. Sure is spooky out here. Oh, no, my cape! Help! Hold on! Jupendous to the rescue! Oh, I wasn't expecting to see a young boy. It's mostly grandmas and scary wolves around here. I heard you scream. Did you need help with something? Yes! This scary villain lady just came out of nowhere and stole my red cape. She said something about loving colors. And she had this really cool color vacuum thing. Hmm, loves colors and has a color vacuum. I know who your problem is. Grace Kale! And she's not going to get away with this. Oh, thank goodness! I need that cape. Kind of hard to be Little Red Riding Hood without the Red Riding Hood part. Well, if I were a girl and a red cape and a forest, where would I go? Oh, how about Grandma's Cottage? That's where I like to go anyway. Good call. Here. <laughs> Hop on. Whoa, cool. And off Drew Road with Little Red deep into the dark, scary forest until they reached Grandma's Cottage. Then they peeked through the windows. There! That's her! And that's my cape! And that's my grandma! I think. Come over here, dearie. Come to grandma. Uh, you like have a really deep voice for an old lady? The better to greet you with. And like really big eyes. The better to see you with. Uh-oh. I know where this is going. And it's not good. Stop right there, both of you. Drew? Ugh. What do you want, kid? I was just about to eat my dinner. We want my cape back. Another one? Where do you kids keep coming from? You can't just steal people's capes, Grace. Oh, yeah? And who's going to stop me? I am the stupendous stupendous on behalf of my fellow caped crusaders. Ha! Huh. Well, I'm, like, not impressed. So scrap. <laughs> I hereby demand that you return Little Red's cape immediately. Uh, yeah, what he said. Or else. Ah, well, when you put it that way, got a jet. Till next time, Drufus. BTW, you guys have some, like, great colors in your outfit. We gotta talk. We sure got her bad this time. That was awesome. Man, this thing is tight. Thanks for sketching me this awesome hoverboard, Drew. She totally fell for it. Wait a minute. I have to eat someone. Grandma doesn't want to be hungry. Hmm, I think I got a better idea. I'm on it. So Drew ran outside and sketched a full moon in the sky. I told you wolves like to do that. Animal Kingdom 101. Looks like he'll be busy for a while. You guys are the best! Couldn't have gotten my cape back without you. Nothing can stop us. <laughs> ah, that, maybe that guy. We better head out while he's still distracted. Yeah, and Miss Booksy will be waiting to finish story time. Thanks, you guys. Anytime, Red. Now you better go find Grandma. Something tells me she'll be needing your help. Once upon a time, there was a cute little girl. Everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood because she always wore red. <laughs> and there it is, her red cape. You did it, Drew. You saved the story. That's what superheroes do. 
Well, kids, Drew and his buddies saved the day once again. Little Red got her cape back, and story time was right back on track. Moral of the story, boys and girls, always be wary of big bad wolves dressed as your grandma. And don't forget your cape next time you gotta fight off the bad guys. It's time for a brand new adventure with this stupendous Drew Pendus and his mighty pet ultimate. Today, Drew must battle a gang of treasure hunting pirates. Are you ready? Let's go! It was a totally typical day at cool school, and Drew was in the library for story time with Miss Booksy. Today we're reading Treasure Island. It's a story about pirates. Pirates? Cool! And hidden treasure. Hidden treasure? Awesome! I'm gonna go into the story with Miss Booksy and find the hidden treasure. Okay, Treasure Island, here we go. It didn't work. Miss Booksy must have a magic nose wiggle. Hmm. I know, I'll just draw myself into the story. Awesome. Drew, what are you doing here? I want to help you fight the pirates and then find the treasure. Well, okay, you can be the cabin boy. Cabin boy with the mighty penultimate though, right? Of course. But then, Drew and Miss Booksy heard something very, very strange. Once upon a time, Miss Booksy and Drew Pendus got trapped inside a story. Wait a minute, that sounds like... Captain Hooksy! Oh no, kids! You remember Captain Hooksy, right? She's from Cruel School, where everything is the opposite of Cool School, and all the teachers are mean instead of nice. Captain Hooksy must have gone into the library and taken Miss Booksy's storybook. That's right. Welcome to Storytime with me, Captain Hooksy. Today we're reading Treasure Island, but it has a little cruel school twist. Miss Booksy and Drew will be trapped forever! Ha ha ha! Oh no! Or maybe the scary pirates will just make them walk the plank! I don't see any scary pirates. Never mind, I see them! Arr, arr, arr. Hey guys, how's it going? I like your eye patch. Arr, I'm Long John Silver, the scariest pirate in the world. Bonk, scariest pirate in the world. Well, I'm Drew Pendus, and I'm here to defeat you. Eat you, eat you, Bonk. No, defeat you. Excuse me, but I tell the stories around here, and this is not how it goes. You're going down, pirate man. Oh, but I'm telling the story now, Booksy, and I don't think you'll like this next part. Maybe we should board my ship and take a little walk on the plank. Walk the plank, walk the plank, walk. Drew, quick. Here I come. Uh-oh. Um, maybe I should have a sword too. Oh, sorry, Miss Booksy. Yarr. Time out, we're gonna need some backup. What are those? Robot pirates! Robot pirates! Robot pirates! What? Let the battle begin! Super Drew, Miss Booksy, and the robot pirates battle Long John Silver and his crusty pirate gang all the way across the beach and onto the pirate ship. And the good guys were winning. Now walk the plank, you mean pirates. But first, tell us where the treasure is. Nice work, guys, but you seem to be forgetting that I'm telling the story now, and this is not how it goes. Yarg, so... Hey, don't me, I you. Silence! Pirates, I want Drew and Booksy tied up. You'll be trapped in the story forever, and then I'll take over cool school. No! You can't do this. Sure I can. Just like this. Once upon a time, a librarian and her student were tied up by pirates and left on a deserted island for infinity. The end. You have to get back to the library and change the story. That won't save you. I have the book now. Your storytelling powers are mine. All mine! Drew, draw something. I can barely move my arms, but I'll try. Hey guys, I found something. I think it's a treasure map. Yar, there's the map we've been looking for. I'll trade you this map for that book. Yar, you've got a deal. No, it's mine. This is mute me. Okay, fine. Finally, the storybook was returned to its rightful owner, Miss Booksy. Captain Hooksy, the evil, cruel school librarian, jumped into the water and swam away. You haven't seen the last of me. I'll be back. Not in my story, you won't. Then the pirates untied Drew Pendus and Miss Booksy and set off for the treasure. And immediately got stuck in quicksand. That's not in the book. Yeah, but I put a big X right over her quicksand pit. Arr! Oh, nice twist. At last, the brave superhero and the really awesome librarian went back to cool school. The end. 
Oh good, it worked this time. And that's the end of our brand new story of Treasure Island, aka Drew and Booksy Battle, Captain Hooksy and the Pirates. And that's the adventure, kids. Moral of the story, don't try to rewrite story time. Hey, who drew in my book? Uh-oh. And never draw in a library book? It's time for a brand new adventure with the stupendous Drew Pendus and his mighty penultimate. Today, Drew must save Color War at camp. It was the last day of camp, and Drew was all ready for... Color War! Camp Cool School's team was decked out in all blue. This year, they were battling the kids from the rival camp across the lake. Okay, we've never met these campers, so we don't know how big they are. Or how crafty. Or how smart. But I know we can win. Team Red's got nothing on us. Wait, where is Team Red? Here we are, ready to play. Oh no, it's Ray Blank. Kids, you remember Ray Blank? He's Drew's evil twin. The camp across the lake must be Camp Cruel School. It was time for the games to begin. The first event was simple, tug of war. Come on, pull harder. Point one for Team Blue. Woo! Mmm, victory is delicious. Next up, arm wrestling. Nope, you win. Nope, I give up. Hey, Nikki, what's the history of arm wrestling? Interesting question. Arm wrestling dates back to the... Hey, you tricked me. You ready? Sure am. You? <gasps> Your magic eraser. How'd you get that back? While you were playing capture the flag, I was playing Captured the Eraser. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Four points for the red team. Well, you're going down in dodgeball. Finally, it was time for dodgeball, the final game. Captain Hooksy popped the ball with her hook. <laughs> Miss Booksy dodged the ball by disappearing into a story. Eventually, it was down to just Drew and Ray. Say hello to Cannon Arms. No match for my eraser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! You're out! Team Blue rules, Team Red drools. Maybe I'll just erase you, Pooh Pendus. Hey, take that back! Guys, stop fighting! I know you're arch enemies and everything, but this is just a game. My thoughts exactly! Oh no! It was Grace Kale and her color sucking vacuum! Grace Kale! She's back! Now you're all totally Team Gray, so I win Color War. Give us back our color, we need it. Yeah, I don't wanna be stuck on the same team as him. Yuck. The color is mine. I win, you lose. <laughs> Ray, I know we're enemies, but we both want the color back, right? Yeah, so what? We can work together to defeat Grace. Work together? Like, as a team? Yeah! yeah. The kids hatched a plan. Drew made a huge pile of colorful balloons. Yoo-hoo, Grace, check it out. So much color. OMG, give me that. But those weren't just balloons. They were water balloons. Cool School and Cruel School joined forces. No, you like totally ruined my hair, stop. No, I'll totally ruin your color sucker. Ray used his magic eraser to erase Grace's <laughs> vacuum. Hey, no fair! Watch out! Here comes the mother loo! Mike, no! Grace's vacuum blasted color all over and it rained Ooh, down no, from no, the sky! Hey. Whatever, I'll be back! And that's how Ray Blank and the stupendous Drupendous worked together to save the Camp Color War. It's like they forgot they were total enemies or something. What now? Water balloon fight! Well, at least they forgot for a little while. And the moral of the story, kids, play fair, work together, and watch out for color-sucking villains when you're in the middle of color war. Hey, at least Raina Gloom didn't show up. Uh-oh. Hey, girls and boys, I have a brand new Ask Miss Booksy for you today, and I'm so, so excited about it. Kayla Toys asked me a really cool question. Miss Booksy, who's your favorite superhero? And actually, a lot of you ask me questions about heroes, and I think that's a great thing to talk about. A hero is usually brave, kind, courageous, and a good friend. I know lots of heroes like this, so let's go. 
In Storytime with Miss Booksy, there have been lots of characters that have been heroic. Like that time Grizz helped me and me, I mean, Snow White and Rose Red, <laughs> defeat the evil troll. Ugh, he was the worst, so rude. But Grizz was super brave and defended his friends, a real hero. Or in A Christmas Carol, when Scrooge helped save Christmas for the Cratchits. He started out a villain, but he learned how to be generous and selfless, and he became a hero. Whoa, this is so cool. It feels like I went into a time machine or something. Awesome. <laughs> well, you guys know I'm a librarian, right? So one of my personal superheroes is Ben Franklin. <laughs> hey, Ben. Hey there, Miss Booksy. Mr. Franklin, when a lot of kids think of you, they think of electricity experiments, inventions, and the $100 bill. Hey, by the way, you have any of those lying around? Oh, Miss Booksy, you're so silly. Aw, oh, shucks. Well, it was worth a try. <laughs> Anyways, can you tell the kids about the other super awesome, super heroic thing you did in 1731? Well, me and some of my friends started the first ever library. And I'm so glad you did because this is my dream job. Yep, back then books were very expensive. So we let people borrow them, read them, and then give them back. I was one of the first librarians. See kids, being creative and willing to try something new can turn into something magical. Also, some of my cool school friends are heroes to me. First, you guys know my bestie is Crafty Carol. She's a hero to me because she's always positive, and she makes me laugh when I'm feeling down. <laughs> and she makes the coolest stuff out of awesome ingredients. Slime! <laughs> Plus, there was that one time she helped me save Humpty Dumpty. Do you guys remember that? She was so resourceful. That means you use what's around you to help solve problems. Sure, superheroes like Batman and Spider-Man and Wonder Woman are cool, but one of my favorite superheroes is Drew Pendis. He has been so adventurous and has saved, like, so many things, like Christmas, Halloween, dinosaurs, the first day of school. He's just like a total superhero. So as you guys can see, I have a lot of heroes. It's always cool to think about the awesome people in your life, right? And of course, these aren't my only favorite heroes. There's also all of you guys. I look up to all of you and how creative you are, how nice you are in the comments, and how you love to read, just like me. <laughs> I love reading letters and comments from you, so if you want to send me any letters, we have a new Cool School mailbox. Here's the address. <laughs> I'll be waiting patiently to hear from you. <laughs> Subscribe so you never miss an episode from Cool School. Bye, kids. See you soon.